we've done it. You stared into the abyss where your N55 Turbo used to live and now you're holding a brand new shiny snail that costs more than your first car. This is the moment of truth. The point of no return is in the rear view mirror and the only thing standing between you and the glorious boost is a pile of bolts you swear has multiplied overnight. This is how we get it all back together, turn that pile of parts into a running car and save enough money to consider buying another questionable project. After hours of fighting, swearing, and sacrificing your knuckles to the German engineer gods, the old turbo is finally out. Let's not mix words. That was a nightmare. I mean, just look at all the parts we had to remove just to get to the turbo. It was not an easy journey. But for some reason, looking at both of these turbos side by side, it is so satisfying. But this just reminds me that the job is not done and the job is not finished. We still have to take this turbo and install it into the vehicle without any issues or leaks. Comment below if you think you could tackle this job on your own. Now when prepping the turbo, you want to remove all the old oil lines and replace them with brand new ones from your local BMW dealership, or you can go the aftermarket route, but you wanna be careful with those because some of those aren't made up to OE standards. So you just wanna be careful when you're buying parts for your BMW or any foreign car. Now, as you can see, I've been fighting with this one oil hose. These things are pretty stuck in there, but just take your time. These things take a little bit of time to come out, a little prying. What you don't want to do is bend the lines. So try not to use any pliers or anything like that. What I usually do is use a little flathead, you know, pry it out a little bit and then just wiggle it out. Now I can't say this enough, every single bolt you take out, please just hand tighten them. These bolts are very sensitive and very soft. So if you use any mechanical tool, there is a high risk of stripping the hole you're staring at the empty space where the turbo used to be a shiny new turbo in your hands and thinking the hard part is over let's make sure this installation goes much much smoother and get you back on the road first after all that work get your surface spotless you didn't go through all that pain just to have a tiny piece left behind cause a massive exhaust leak next a sanity check Place your new and old turbo side by side. Make sure you receive the right part before you go any further. Now I placed the turbo here just to show you guys that you can get it in, but you have to do it from under the subframe. It is a little tight. Um, there's no way to get it in through the exhaust side. Don't even try it. Trust me, it's just gonna be a headache. Now here is the turbo, well, the new turbo mounted up on the engine block, but for some reason, it just looks so good. I don't know what it is. I think it's just something about a new turbo on the car with everything else new with it that is just satisfying. Here's a better look from the passenger side, real well. Now you guys wanna be patient when you put this turbo in. It is a little heavy, but I'm pretty sure you guys go to the gym, so I think you'll be fine. Connect all the connectors to the turbo. Now, when installing these turbo lines, you want to make sure you take your time and always, I mean always, lubricate the O-rings that are on the hoses or the lines. Me, personally, I think this is the most crucial part because if one of those O-rings pinches, you will be back in the same position you were in when you remove the turbo. Now, next up is the coolant water pipe. This pipe connects to the engine block, the water pump, and to the oil thermostat on top of the engine. And there's another O-ring. Do not forget to lubricate it. After the water pipe, now it's time to install the water pump. One side connects to the water pipe and the other side connects to the thermostat. This is how the engine stays cool. Give me a second guys, a customer stopped by for a vehicle Diag at our shop. I just took some time to look at it. Sounds pretty good. And I like this carbon right here. This is nice. Oh, and it's on the dash too. This is pretty snazzy. Okay, back to regular programming. So I did install the water pump, as you guys can see here. Also the water pipe is there as well. You can't really see it. Um, it goes over the turbo manifold. 
Now that we have that in, we can install the axle and the intercooler. Also, don't forget these clips right here, they're for the intercooler. If you watched the last video, you know about these. Now let's take a look. We have the catalytic converter here, but we have all these other parts. I wanna install the catalytic converter, but I can't because I have the motor mount and the post mount that I have to put in first. So the post mount goes first, then the motor mount. After I could finally install the cat. The axle can be one of the last things installed, like the video. Okay, so let's break it down. I have the cat installed, the post mount installed, and the motor mount with the axle installed. Not too bad, not too bad. Oh, another thing, if you watched the last video, you know about this clamp. And there you have it. You've battled the German octopus in its lair and emerged victorious. The engine's running and you saved a fortune compared to a dealership trip. Money you can now spend on more car parts, obviously. If this guide helped you survive the ordeal, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and go enjoy that hard earned boost.